Hello and welcome back to Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make word clouds in Tableau. Word clouds are a popular type of infographic where you show the relative frequency of words in your data set by sizing them relative to each other. So in this case, writing is the word that shows up the most because it's larger than all the other words in this data set and in this word cloud. In this one, it's loving, this is its leadership, in this one, it's big data, and so on and so forth. We're going to be showing you how to build these in Tableau but also have a quick discussion in terms of visual best practices, when to use a word cloud, when not to, and some potential substitutes that convey the same message, but hopefully in a more clear way. So first things first though, we're gonna come into Tableau and make our word cloud. We're gonna to connect to our data. It doesn't really matter what type of data you're using. In this one, we're using a text file with some made up bank data. We'll import that in, come to our sheet, and we'll see that we have our dimensions and our measures brought in. Word clouds are usually made off of dimensions, and in this case, we're gonna make ours based off of name. So we have our names, Abigail, all the way down through Zoe, and we're gonna build our word cloud to see if we have relatively more people named Abigail than Amelia, or Amanda than Audrey. Basically figuring out if for some reason there's a pattern in the first names of people who use our bank. So to start, we'll drag name over to text, and now we have again, Abigail through Zoe, but all in the same block. When we build a word cloud, we're going to want to see whether Abigail has more instances than Zoe. So if Abigail, for example, has six and Zoe only has two, Abigail should be bigger than Zoe, and so on and so forth across every single one of these names. Now, at a fundamental level, we're really just looking for the frequency that these names occur in our data set. So if we come into our data right here, we see that we have our customer IDs, we have the date joined, etc. And basically, we have one row for each individual customer. So we could use some uh, distinct count, we could use a count of names, but we can also just use the shortcut number of records. So if we drag number of records up to size, we see that Tableau automatically creates a tree map for us. We'll come back to this in a second and why it's doing that. But in order to build the word cloud, which we'll finish first, you come up here to your mark shelf, you click on the drop down for chart type, and then you tell Tableau, rather than automatic, we actually want you to use text. And there we go, we have our word cloud. So you can come here, you can hide the title, change this to entire view, it'll effectively center itself. And there you can see the distribution of names across your data set, sized by their relative frequency. So we can see immediately that Jason is one of the more frequent names, we have 42 counts, while names like Jackson, there's only one, so that's a lot smaller. Dan, we have more than Joe, and Lucas, we have more than Sue. The nice thing about this is when doing it in Tableau, you can actually replace name with other values. So for instance, if we wanted to look at surname, we could drag that as well and we see a similar type of pattern emerge with the different surnames. We can also go with something that has fewer values like region, and you'll see very quickly we have the most people in England, next in Scotland, then Wales, and then Northern Ireland. Along with this, rather than just showing frequency using number of records, you can also make a word cloud based off of another value. So for instance, balance, or the sum of the amount of money they have with the bank in this fake data set. Right here, as you'd expect, you have the most money in England, the next in Scotland, the next in Wales, and then similar amount in Northern Ireland, at least that's how it looks. This is really expected because you tend to have more money where you have more people, but it's also good to know that you can make a word cloud sized off of different measures. And honestly, that's all that there is for a word cloud. You can change it up a little bit if you want. You can drag region up to color, and then it makes the distinction between them a little bit clearer, which works really well for small data sets. If we went back to name and then drag name up to color, things would get busy very quickly. The multiple colors really aren't helping that much because you'll see that we have all of our colors going through, but then they have to repeat multiple times. This happens because Tableau effectively caps the number of colors that you have on your view. When you're using discrete values like this, you'll notice as you flip through available values, you have Tableau 10, Tableau 20, Tableau Classic 10, Tableau Classic 20. You never see a number higher than 20. That's because when you get to more than 20 distinct colors on a view, the colors all start blurring together and you can't really tell the difference. For example, what shade of pink is this or what shade of purple is this? Is this the dark one, is it the light one? If you start adding more than 20, those distinctions go away very quickly and the additional color doesn't really help. So when you've got a lot like name, you don't really wanna use that. When you have a few like region, it works pretty well. But at the same time, since we're talking about individual colors and relative sizing, relative number of things, it's now a good time to talk about best practices. So right now we have our word cloud where we're looking at the balance to size different things and we have England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. In this one you tell that England is first, that one's clear, 
Scotland is next, then there's Wales and there's Northern Ireland. But if you're looking at them, how much bigger is Wales than Northern Ireland? How much bigger is Scotland than Wales? How much smaller is Northern Ireland than England? You know there's a sort of relative difference, but it may be worth checking other visuals that are out there. So if we come over, we look at region, we'll act like we're building out the word cloud again, then we'll drag balance up to size, and Tableau, in this case, gives us our tree map that we were looking at before. So now we can see England is massive compared to the others. We had this in our previous view, but a tree map shows a bit more information. We then see that Scotland is a clear second, Wales a clear third, and Northern Ireland a definite fourth. That gets lost a little bit in a word cloud. You lose some of the distinction between the relative values, so it becomes harder to tell which is which. And while you still know the relative positions, again, first, second, third, fourth, that's not too hard, the relative difference between them is difficult to see. So something like a tree map makes that a lot easier to see. So we'll call this our word cloud. And then we'll come here to sheet two, we'll call this our tree map. And then we'll add one more using the classic, but very helpful, bar chart. We'll drag this out to the entire view just so it's very obvious. We'll drag region down, then you can sort it. And here you see very quickly the relative difference between the four of them. So you see that Scotland is almost half of England, again, Wales is almost half of Scotland, and the Northern Ireland is even less than half of Wales. So again, some additional detail, we'll call this our bar chart, some additional detail that is seen and provided in this additional comparison that in the word cloud gets a little bit lost. So we put these on a dashboard, we can compare the three of them real quick. We'll have our word cloud, then we'll have our tree map, and then we'll have our bar chart. And again, these provide good information it's not like the word cloud is misleading, but what it does is visually doesn't provide the same clues at the same speed that the tree map and the bar chart do. So it's worth considering when you want to use a word cloud or not. In general, personally, I steer away from them because I like the additional information that the comparatives give for the bar chart or the tree map. Sometimes your client wants a word cloud, they pop really nicely, they provide good insight and make it look trendy, and so that could be a use case for it. But there are times as well when you really do not want to use it. Another quick example of that is if we come back and we rebuild our name like we did earlier. So name, number of records right here. When you have a tree map rather than a word cloud, you're able to see the distribution of a lot of the other numbers that get lost in the name. So again, we come up here, we make this our word cloud. And so when we have a word cloud going on, we see a whole bunch of different names, but we're not really sure how these other smaller ones relate to each other. We lose the detail and the relative sizing between them. We go back to our tree map, and you can see you start here at Jason and then go all the way down, and you can tell quickly that Ava is smaller than Frank, smaller than Emma, smaller than Joanne, Faith, etc. It provides additional context that makes comparisons possible at more than just the top to the bottom. So there was just a quick discussion of visual best practices, of which charts to use, tree maps versus bar charts versus word clouds. But now you know how to use a word cloud. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. You'll be able to use this or not use it in your work, depending on what you need. So that's it for us for this latest tutorial. Hope that you found it useful. As always, feel free to reach out to us with any questions or suggestions for our next tutorial. Thank you so much, and we'll see you then.